with our beautiful sister, Lee, uh, who, as we say with everyone, but honored to call you our dear sister. Uh, you show up in this beautiful world every day to help so many people and you always just give of yourself because that's who you are. That's your heart and your soul. You are an incredible teacher. You're an energy worker. You are a, a friend. You are just such a nurturer and you do so much for Marla and I, as you just shared with us, <clears throat> excuse me, prior how much you say we do for you, but I have to say thank you for being you because you give more than you know to us. So one, we love you and we're so glad you're here to share your story, your journey with the world. So world, this is our beautiful sister, Lee. Lee, this is the world. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I will say how I, I met Marla and Scott was I had lost my job in the morning, like at 8.30, and I went to a meeting with another healer, energy person, um, Katie, and she was having a, a meeting for us to all get together, and Scott and Marla came to talk about the intention stick. And as soon as I heard of them speaking, I knew there was a connection between us, and I had to have that intention stick. Even though I just lost my job, I wanted to have one of those sticks, and I was so grateful that you had them affordable. So I didn't have to buy a three, four or $500 necklace because they're beautiful. These are really beautiful ones and they're not that expensive for the least, I think it was $60, is that what it is? Yeah, the spiritual numerology, uh, the $59.99. $59. It wasn't and about a piece of jewelry. No, and it was really about the intention that you put in the stick. And I asked you, what should I put in here? And you told me success, uh, let it be, and what was the other one? Trust. Trust, trust. And I put that in the stick. And the very next weekend, I was going to a seminar with Dr. Bradley Nelson, who is the one who came up with the body code and emotion code work for energy healers. Mm -hmm. And I went to his seminar, and I, right away, I knew this is what I needed to do. I signed up to take his courses so that I could learn to help heal people any way that I could. They have to be ready to be healed, but at least I can release negative energy that's in their body to help them open up to the world and what's there for them to be brought to them. And I've, I've been doing that work now for over two years and I love what I'm doing. Um, and the funny thing was with Scott and Marla, we just, what was it, like a month later, I was going to this other meeting for people who had committed suicide. I had a nephew who actually died from a heroin overdose. Um, so it wasn't really a suicide, but when it's heroin and it's overdose, it's basically the same type of thing. And I went there and who shows up, but the two of them were walking in and there they are right there again. So it's like, it was just like synchronicity everywhere I went, they were there. I went to the Phoenician for a weekend and was just walking around and they had some kind of uh, open house up there with their jewelry store. So I got to see them there again. So it's like we very much be, must be connected. And I've bought many sticks, these intention sticks for my friends and my family members, people mm -hmm. who needed something to believe in and to really connect with that can help them to either heal or find a job or maybe it's a relationship. And I really think that it it shifted people that I gave these sticks to. Now they may not have had a big miracle in their life, but it actually did make a difference in their life. Mm. Made a difference in mine. And recently I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. And the first thing I did was talk to Marla and Scott and say, you know, what should I be putting in this stick for so that I've got what I need? Well, hold and on, hold on. This is uh, that, well, one, because I want to pause for just a moment because not to interrupt, but there, there's so much more that took place the first night we met. Oh, you want to unpack? I want to unpack just yeah. a hair. Okay, unpack some of that. Okay, talk, about, talk, talk about the miracle that you're going to share right now, which it is that we're, we're honored to be sitting here with you holding the space so you can share this. And the courage that you have on this journey is enough for everyone. So that first night, yes, Marla and I, our dear sister Katie, 
again, family, uh, asked Marlene to come speak at her beautiful event. And we were honored to be there. And we did a guided meditation. And there was about 70 of us. And what was so beautiful, as you know, when we finished, we had the entire room stand up. We held hands. We did those blessings and prayers yes. for everyone receiving their intention sticks. And as we, Marla and I stood and, and we were helping you receive your intention sticks, I'll never forget you came up and shared with Marla and I really what took place as you just shared. Yes, you know, again, I lost my job this morning and I wasn't even in come, but something was telling me I need to come and, and again, yes, we're all busy in life, regardless if there's a line around the, the world waiting, we have to be present for one another. We have to listen, we have to hold that space because that was a very dramatic time in your life. That morning you lost your job, what am I gonna do? We're lost, the COVID, I'm not working. I, God forbid someone's sick. Again, we're all going through these similar challenges and obstacles. But when we can understand, we have to be present for everyone that shows up in our lives to, to listen and understand that you're going through something. And to you, that's very important for someone to rush through or not listen and take the time and the love and care. And as you said, help you choose your words from what Marla and I were receiving, what we were feeling to help you on the next part of your journey. And as you shared that, we all agreed that, yes, success, that success doesn't necessarily mean monetary. Success can mean in a relationship or a family community, success finding a job, which you did. Um, you, you chose um, the be, let it be, which was very hard for you because you were carrying so much and you needed to let it go and forgive, which again, everyone holds on to their past, which we have to remember to let go because it no longer serves us. And, and you did, and we still have layers and we still work on those challenges, as you know. And the last thing that Marla and I remember telling you, and this is, you're, you're right, this is what, a year, two years? Two years, it's over two, two years. years ago, yeah. Trust, because if we don't trust the journey, nothing else matters and you chose your words and you placed them and we did we watched you fill up and, and and then as you just shared with us that journey of success of trusting getting a job becoming a energy worker to help others not just energy but also communication you being an ambassador for the tree of life meaning sharing your stories getting these for everyone you know i mean unbelievable beyond uh, which Marla and I are so grateful that you are in our lives. And yes, you call, we text. I mean, this is why people think or hear when Marla and I are speaking, when we say, we're here for you, call us, text us. It doesn't matter when, we're always there. And I know you know that because we yes. have been on this journey for two years and we have been there for one another. And good, bad, and different. Everything's good as we know. And I'm going to preface how powerful this story is right now, because you called us. Well, actually there was a text you sent two weeks ago saying that I was just diagnosed with breast cancer and we, we stop whatever we're doing. It wasn't, okay, we're going to text you back. Okay. Good luck with that. No, we called you immediately to talk about what is going on. What are you still holding on to that God forbid may have caused the sickness or pain in, in your body or someone else that may be listening to this. And I'm gonna have you share that story because it's, it's very powerful. And what took place in these two weeks that really we witnessed a miracle together. So I'm gonna let you start by, you messaged us and let us know and then what took place from there. So thank you for allowing me just to kind of unpack because there was a lot to unpack there. But now, we- are... Lee and Scott also, I, those two weeks, I am so 
forgetful of what was going on because there was so much happening to me during those weeks. So please chime in where I miss pieces, <laughs> remind me. I do definitely remember that you called right away when I said that. And we talked, talked about what I still was hanging on to. And I knew it had to do with things from childhood. So uh, to have a disease like cancer, it's really serious that you really don't want to be on this planet much longer when you get cancer. So there's something holding you back and wanting you to go that you need to let go of. And I, because I do the energy work that I do do, I was able to release a lot of the emotions that were tied to it. So I had a pretty good idea what it was. And it was in my right breast, which means it's more male oriented. And I have been married several times. So I knew where a lot of it was coming from. But even when I work on myself, it's very hard to work on yourself when you're so attached to what these pieces are. So you actually have to go outside of yourself to get some help, which I have been doing. I've been going to different healers that I believe in and I trust and the intention stick. I wanted to make sure that I had the best words that can help me the most at this time. And that's what we talked about is what would be the best choices for the words that I need to get myself healthy again. You gave me trust, happiness, health, oneness. So I put those all in my intention stick. And the first biopsy they did, they found out I was stage one. So that was good news because it could have been a lot, a lot worse. It was stage one. It's an invasive type of cancer. So it's aggressive, but not super aggressive. It's kind of in the middle of the road. But I just made up my mind that however this journey was going to go, I had to try alternative ways to be cured of this because I have five aunts in my family on my father's side who died, didn't die from breast cancer, but they all had mastectomies because they had breast cancer. I was told at a young age that I couldn't get it because my dad couldn't give me that gene. Well, I did get breast cancer. So it said, you know, the, the doctors don't know what causes it. They say it's stress or it's, you know, hereditary. But I, I know in my own knowing that we carry so much things from our childhood that are very deep. And sometimes we can't reach them until something really big comes into our lives. And I do believe that with the work I'm doing on myself and the people who are helping me, and it's like the people are just showing up. I looked in a, I looked on Google for a natural path because I really wanted to use a natural path besides a medical doctor. Because medical doctors will do surgery, radiation, and chemo. Those are your choices. Now I'm stage one, and I'm going to get the same type of treatment as say somebody who's stage four. She does not make sense at all. So when he told me what my options were, I started looking for a naturopath, and there were three three types that were here that I could choose from, and I just knew which one to choose. I knew the the practice, I knew the doctor I wanted, and when I walked into her office, she was exactly who I who I felt like I knew her all my life, just like when I met you. I mean, I just knew this yeah. was person for me. And she said the same thing. She says, we must have known each other in past lives. And I'm like, oh, you and I are going to get along really well. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I've got the, a great natural path. I, I also work for doTERRA. I uh, became a distributor for myself to get the oils. I don't sell them to other people, but I wanted to be able to know enough about it, learn enough about it that I knew what to use for myself. Yes. I met many people there, and there's a beautiful woman there, Susie Ruse, who is um, an advocate for cancer with the essential oils. And I've met her. She's helping me with the essential oils that I'm going to be using as well. Um, I read a lot of things about Anthony Williams, a medical medium. So I'm doing some of his cleanses and his detoxing. So I have like six to eight weeks before they say, I really need to do the surgery because they want you to wait at least, you know, no longer than 90 days. But most of the things that I'm working on just take six to eight weeks. Yes. You know, everything just feels like they're showing up. When I'm looking for somebody, somebody pops up. I talked to you and Marla and said, do you know anybody who has any kind of treatments that I can try? I mean, that's what I'm looking for right now is something natural, something I can take. I mean, I'm willing to do diet, whatever it is, diet, nutrition, anything, any kind of supplements that I can supplement to make myself stronger, my immune system stronger, less toxic. But that to me is how you cure cancer besides the emotional part. You have to do all. It's not just the medicine. You've got to work on yourself. And I know that from the work that I do. 
I know how that heals and how it shifts and changes you. Yes. So that's what I'm all about. I do body code and emotion code work. I love what I'm doing. And I know I've helped a lot of people uh, with this. And I wouldn't have gone to it if I hadn't lost my job. So I know that when you lose your job, it's the universe telling you there's a new opportunity and a better opportunity out there for you. And you need to go look for it. It's a gift. That's right. Sometimes yes. those things have to happen for you. Otherwise, we get comfortable. Yeah. We never. We may never open another door. And right. so, exactly. Sometimes those opportunities uh, show up for you, even though you yeah. may not see it that way. Hence, the the intention of trust that you yeah. originally had in your intention stick and. Uh, I would love to touch on something that you brought up, which is something I think that most of us in this world suffer from, which is things that we suppress from our childhood mm -hmm. that later turn up as disease or illness, pain. right? Or pain. Yeah. Uh, and, and so can you explain, and we can talk about this together, but what did you mean by that? We, we want you to well, share what you meant by that. With this emotion code and body code work, and I've worked on myself a lot with therapy and uh, other kind of healing type things. I used to do Akashic Record reading. So I've seen what comes up for people in childhood. And now that I've worked with the emotion code and body code, a lot of the things I find that I connect to that little child inside of people. Even though I'm looking at you two as an adult, I can see Scott when he was a little kid and I can see you as a little kid and I can connect to that. Mm. Where I, I'm a little different than most that do emotion code and body code, I connect to that little kid inside of you. Yes. There are ones who tell me what happened when you were a child that created this abandonment in you so that when, as an adult, you keep getting relationships that don't work for you. They keep leaving you. So whatever those big pieces are when you were a child, you repeat them in your adulthood because you don't know any different. You try to create the same thing in adulthood that you were used to in childhood. So if you were missing something in your childhood, you're going to be missing it in your adulthood until you work on that. I know what it is. And with the emotion code, it's this negative energy in your body. Like if, if it's abandoned, let's take abandonment for an example. That abandonment is a negative energy that is sitting in your body. I work on people's heart wall, a wall around your heart where all these negative energies were trapped by you through your life mm -hmm. that you hold inside of you so that it triggers other people. You know, like when you walk into a room and there's somebody that you don't like them and you have not even spoken to them. It's because that energy is sitting inside of you. Yes. It's not just them, it's you. Correct. And if they ping you or you're like, oh, I don't want to be around that person. Well, that's an energy inside of you that really is shown, showing up for you to say, there's something going on with you. Mm -hmm. I see the emotion code work. I, I see this negative energy, sort of like a clogged pipe that we have in our body. Our body's full of energy and it all works really well when nothing's clogged with negative energy in there from our childhood that we've developed. That energy clogs, clogs our pipes. And if you don't do something to undo those clogged pipes, then it eventually will grow into disease or unhappiness in some way. You're not clear about things or your relationships. It affects everything that we do. Yes. And by doing this work has really shown me what a difference it makes when you release this heart wall. Because a heart wall not only keeps you from, it hangs on to all these negative energies, it also closes you down from bringing in a lot of the positive things. I've had people, I can give a really good example that I did just last year. I was at a retreat and a young woman um, had pain in her right hip. So I was just doing an example for everybody so they could see what I do and how I do it. And I released a few things of the energies and, and she started crying after the first one. And I'm like, well, what happened to you at six years of age? Oh, well, my dad was killed in a construction accident at work. And then the next one comes up, it was like seven years old and she started crying again. I'm like, well, what happened at seven? Like, this was the second one I asked her and she's crying again. I've never had any, that kind of experience before, but now I'm in front of a whole audience and I'm like, do you want me to do this in a separate room? And she goes, no, let's just clear it out, whatever it is. <laughs> her seventh birthday was only three months after he was killed. Mm. Seventh birthday reminding of her father. 
And we release several other emotions. I don't remember how many. I don't usually release more than 10 for a person because it can overwhelm them if you do more than that. But I always wait for the subconscious mind on her side to tell me it's time to stop. And I will stop whatever that is. And I, after we were done, she started walking. I said, just walk up and down a few steps in the room. And she's like, wow, the pain is gone. And by releasing that pain for her within a, I'd say it was probably about three to four months. She met a wonderful man that she's still with now, very happy. So by releasing that energy that was stuck in her hip was also affecting her relationships. And when that energy was released, she was able to build a new relationship. And so far, as far as I know, it's still going very well. So it's like every person that I've worked on has a story and each of them tells me something different. So I don't know when I work on somebody, is it going to be a relationship that changes? Will it be success at work? Will it just be clarity where they know what they want and what their purpose is here? It could be anything, but I have seen the release of these negative energies really shifting people. So to me, this cancer is some negative energy in there that I need to release and let go of. And by releasing that, I'm hoping my body will heal itself, but I'm also going to support it in other ways with supplements and doing the right things nutrition wise. So it's not like it's a miracle and, you know, the miracle happens and everything goes away. But the more that we work on ourselves and recognize that we have issues from childhood that cause us issues in adulthood. And the more we can release those issues from childhood, you would be amazed at how, what a difference it makes in our adulthood. Yeah. And you're so right, because I think what happens when we become adults, we poo poo things that happen to us when we're little kids, because we don't want to make a big deal. Oh, that wasn't a big deal. However, it is a big deal because we are carrying yeah. that with us all the way through and it creates who mm. we are to the present time, right? And you know, that that we understand that piece of it as well. And so what happens is that what we've talked about, our thoughts create things in our head and our imagination. And those things can turn into sickness and into disease within our body if we don't <clears throat> release it and be let it be, right? To put it to the, you know, let it go and send it with love because it no longer serves us. It's okay to remember, meaning you, it's okay to allow it to show up, but as long as you don't hold on to it, because sometimes it also reminds us of what we don't want in our life. It leads us to what we do want. And so um, we have to embrace, right? And really sit with something that may have happened to us as a child and embrace that and hold it and, and realize it made us who we are today. That, there, that even though our perception of something that happened to us as a child is really bad, that's just perception because everything shows up to better us, to make us grow for our soul's evolution while we're here, which is the tree of life. And, and that's and that, why we can't have regrets for any part of our life because we wouldn't be who we are today without going through those challenges. hundred percent. And something this so challenge, and there'll be something that'll come out of this challenge for me. I know that in and, my heart, I know that when I get through this challenge, it will change me and shift me in ways that I don't even know yet. Yes. But it'll make me a better person or a new person than what I am today. Every day that we shift and change in those, we are a different person. And we don't have to regret anything that we've had in the past. Go, we, they got us where we are today. Yes. Yes. And you know how they always say <laughs> to that we must enjoy the journey, right? right? It's not the destination. And so again, our perception is that this is bad, but it, it's going to lead you to a beautiful place. You're, you, like you said, I'm going to start taking care of my well-being. I'm going to start taking of my well-living. I'm going to maybe eat differently. I might be taking different types of supplements and I, I'm, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently now and choose different intentions. Well, that, and that's, the, that's one of the most important things that Marla and I talked about on the day you called. We said, yes, it's time to switch out your words. Even though you are an energy worker, a teacher, and you work on others, but sometimes we forget 
Lee, and we're talking so. as we know our truth, yeah. that you give everything of yourself and you forget to take care of Lee because that's who you are. You literally gave everything of you to everyone else. And it was time to fill Lee back up with what Lee needed for her to make you the best version of who you are. So you can continue to help others that you do every day. And we talked about the new intentions you chose, but we talked about they're only words if we perceive them as a word that we're just placing inside the intention stick versus the intention we're setting that we believe in it. We feel that we know that I am healthy, the forgiveness, I am letting go of the, the past relationships. I am filling myself up with oneness or, or success for everything to, to manifest. And, and to make sure your vessel is full of those beautiful things, but you know that. And most importantly, you're trusting it because that's the one we keep in ours permanently. As we said, if we don't trust the journey, nothing else matters. And you literally, we felt the energy over the phone when you knew what we were telling you about, let go of what you're still carrying. Even all of us, it doesn't matter how spiritual, yeah. religious, whatever your practice may be, we still have layers of layers of things that we carry that you, for example, were holding on. And what Marla was just saying, even if you go to a doctor and you're treated with medicine or natural or holistic or chemo or radiation, or they surgically remove it, we know that sickness could come back. And sometimes it comes back with a vengeance because it's not what caused the sickness in the first place, it's the things that we swallow. We swallow our sadness, our anger. I'm fine, I'm fine, all the way back from childhood till today. And it's not fine. As we keep saying, it's okay not to be okay. But thankfully you realized because it took a tree falling on you to shake you to the core and, and God forbid it is sickness, but you know what caused your sickness that you're able mm -hmm. to finally let that go. As you just said, forgive and send it with love because it no longer serves you on your journey. And you are healing. You are good. You have this and you are such an incredible example of you speaking your words, you living your life of intention, not only for what you do for so many others, but you're now having to do it for yourself, but it's with such blessings because you, you feel it, you see it, you understand it, you're living it. And, and I love also, you know, thank you for sharing that. So powerful. You also said something about clogged pipes mm -hmm. and you're exactly right. And again, that goes back to intention. When you live with intention, your pipes are so open and clear to receive everything you need, right? Think of those pipes from your heart to above. That connection of what you're receiving. So when you're putting out love, mm. oh, that love is coming right back to you, right? Yeah. Or, or that trust or that happiness. Oh, and it's so beautiful and clear. It's coming right back yes, and filling yes. you up. And, and so mm. I, I love that you said that because that is, that is our vessel um, that we're carrying with us. And I wanted you to share, you mentioned uh, the four intentions that you're actually carrying now. You reset your intentions. And, mm. and can we just unpack yeah. the intentions for a second sure. as to uh, why we talked about these four intentions for you? Sure. The first one we had again was trust. Because mm -hmm. I have trust in my own knowing and knowing that I'll be able to make the right decision based on what I'm feeling and not what I'm hearing around me. Yeah. And be inside of me, I have to feel it. I mean, just the words of radiation and chemo actually gives me a stomach ache just hearing yeah. it. And I know that I can't put those kind of poisons in me. 
and maybe it works for other people because they believe in that medicine and that that'll work and that'll save them. For right. me, I don't think it would work because I don't believe in it. I can't put it in my body. But it's really trusting yourself, knowing that you'll know what, what you need to do and to trust how things are going to work out. And I truly believe that I'm going to be okay. I've heard that since I heard the news. I mean, I really sat there when he first told me and I was just like, are you sure you got the right person? Because I really don't think I have cancer. And he's like, oh no, it's, it's you. And I'm like, well, okay. But it was very hard for me to really feel like this was really there because to me, it's just something that needs to be healed. So it's, it's there and I'm going to heal it in the way that feels right to me. So I have to trust that I'll know what that is for me. Yes. Another one I had was health. Of course, I want to have the intention of good health, that when this is over, I'm done. I'm not gonna bring anything like this to me again. It's gonna be a one-time thing, a big wake-up call for me, but it's gonna be finished. So I'm gonna have health. The other intention is happiness just to have happiness. No matter what, I am going to be happy. I'm very blessed right now. I'm renting a home for my nephew. I love it. I'm in Milwaukee from Arizona to Milwaukee, which everybody says you're going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back with family and what a time to be around family that I get sick and here I am, I'm, I'm by family that I'm very close to. But it's been beautiful. I mean, this has probably been one of the best years I've had in a very long time. So it's kind of shocking that now this is when it comes up. But that's when things do come up. Because when things are going really well and you're not stressed with the everyday stuff going on, then these things creep up and really show you, oh, you got something else you need to work on. So I definitely have health in there. And the last one that I have is just oneness. Just being one with everyone. And you guys are all about oneness. And sharing everything together the love like you said i mean i bring in not only love for myself but everyone that i know has brought their prayers for me i totally believe prayers can heal anything and have miracles i've seen it many many times i have a prayer group that anybody that's sick i put them on and so far we're doing very well with all of them being healed so i said well i'm not going to be the first one that isn't going to be healed <laughs> be healed too <laughs> You, you, you got this. Yeah, we, we, the, the day we spoke, the mm -hmm. day we spoke when you called us, you have yeah. this. And, and you are such an inspiration mm -hmm. for anyone that sees this beautiful, beautiful call we're having right now to let them know they can do the same thing. They can get through this. They're not alone. And, and as you know, we're we're family we're not going through this alone we're going through this together anyone god forbid that has sickness or something going on in their lives and that's that's the importance of what this is about to let everyone know that they are loved they are family again as you know very well just because someone's your biological family doesn't make them your spiritual family our spiritual family is around the world and we are wrapped in love and, and as you said, prayers and intention and just gets better and better every day and stronger. And that light is overcoming all that negativity and darkness in this world. And yes, as you said, it's been the best year of your life. As we say, sometimes the more good we're doing, sometimes the harder we're tested to allow us to continue to grow ourselves, right? If, we, if we're, yes, we're all blessed. We, we opened our eyes this morning, as we say every day, we are blessed. Nothing, the rest is just details. But it's, it's, the, it's the test that are coming into our lives to continue to allow us to grow, to take that wisdom and then share it with someone else as we're doing here together. And that's why this is so important because we wanna make sure no one from all of these tens of thousands of stories taking place around the world. We cannot let someone think they're going through this by themselves, because if they do, then call us or message us or reach. I know you're the same way. That's what family is for. To be you there. guys are very important people, very busy in your life. And you didn't, you did exactly what you said. You dropped everything and you called me. Hmm. Oh, that Scott and Marla really mean what they're saying. They're not just saying that. 
they really mean it. If you need help, you need any any kind of backup from them, they are there for you with your time and need to help you just figure out what you need maybe and your intention stick. That may just be, I'm just so distraught with what's going on. I can't choose the words. I wanna make sure I choose the words that are gonna be the most helpful for me. They yes. can help you with that. So that's why I've always been blessed with you in my life that we have been close together in many situations. Um, and you've always answered whenever I've texted. I always share your tree of uh, life movement to my friends and to everyone, not and the intention stick to all of my relatives. I bought everybody I can think of that's got one now. <laughs> yeah. It's the best thing to do for anybody because all you're doing is putting an intention that you want to have for yourself. And these intentions really work. Just oh. like emotion code, releasing emotions. There's so many modalities that really, really help us to release whatever is stuck in us from childhood on going into adulthood. So don't ever think that you just have to go the medical way because uh, he's a doctor and he's gonna tell me this is what I have to do. Mm. Just because they say it doesn't mean you have to do it. Right. Do what is right to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a choice, free choice, yep. right? Yep. I love it. And wow, I, I seriously, I, I am so filled up by you and your love and your courage and your light and what you're doing for so many others. And that's why at the beginning of the conversation, honored to call you our sister, honored to call you family. As, as we see our family is growing every day around the world and it's just beginning. And this is what the world needs to understand that we are here for, more, for one another, good or bad. It's all good, but we just want to make sure that no one is left alone or feeling alone, and and they are they are loved, and, yes. and they do matter, and they do have purpose, and as you and I talk about, as Marla, they're just as important as anyone else in this world, and we just have to let them know. We have to inspire them. We that's why we wake up each day and say, what beautiful souls are brought into our lives and who we're going to touch and affect and help them get through something maybe much more difficult than what someone else is going through. And that's what brings us our bliss. Just having this conversation is bliss, knowing you're healthy, knowing you've got this, knowing you're still gonna continue to help so many others, but that's why we're all here. We're all healers and priests and rabbis and yogis and teachers and therapists and, and students. But that's the wisdom and knowledge that we're all given to help and share that with one more person, a hundred more people, a million more people, seven billion people plus, and for generations to come. And yes. that's what we're doing. And we're unifying this beautiful world because we can't witness what's taking place any longer, the divisiveness. When we start to realize we are all the same, regardless mm -hmm of ego, politics, religion, color, culture, whatever that may be, it's an illusion. We are, there's no one better than anyone else in this world and there's no one worse. We are all the same, this world forgot. And you showing up how you do every day is proof of that because you treat everyone the same because everyone is the same. That's what Marl and I do every day because everyone's the same and that's what we're doing. And it's amazing, it's miraculous. And that's unconditional love. I agree. <laughs> we, are this. we are all one. The greatest example that I saw, and it was on Facebook actually, was a brown egg and a white egg. And when you open up those eggs, what's inside of it? Mm -hmm. Exactly the same. And that's what we have to remember. Doesn't matter what the outside looks like. And the inside, we're all exactly the same. We're all one. Right, one, we're not judged. Who are we right. to look at someone else and think someone's better or worse than who we are? Right. right? We have to see the exactly. good in everyone. It's there. It just may be covered up with a lot of the baloney and the junk and the fear and the ego and the power, whatever it may be for that, but it's good. That goodness is in everyone and we have to help them get that out of them and brush off all the things they were programmed to think, to think that they're different than someone else. So. Yeah, this is just clothing, right? Yes. That's right. It's our little coats that we have on us, right? 
for our souls. Yes. Oh, well, I, I seriously, I don't think there's any, unless there's anything you want to no, share or Lee, I, anything else you want to share? Because this was. No, I, I think it's good. Wow, this was incredible. We're taking the time. Oh my goodness. Really appreciate it. You, are, you already know the pleasure is truly all ours. And, and we love you and yes, we miss you even though you're in Wisconsin and yes, you were here in Scottsdale, but you already know you're with us every day and always there for you as I know you're there for us. And, and that's the, the trust we have in one another that no matter what, we're, we're there for one another as we are for everyone else in this world. So you already know our sign off because one, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you, we love you. We love you. We love you. And you are healthy. You are healthy. You are healthy. And sending you. you blessings and intentions of gratitude, light, and love. Mwah. Like, thank you, Bob. Power I appreciate of, it. Wow. <laughs> yes. I love you too. You I love both of you. You do. <laughs> thank you. You got this. The hundredth power of got this. <laughs> thank right? you. Right? And if you need I, to take, I do feel like it. You need a kick in the tush. You can call us anytime. We'll get you right back on back. Okay, I will. <laughs> love you, love, love you, love you. Bye, you guys. Love you. Bye-bye.